Corner, presented by Jennifer. Kayam's Legacy, Part 4, Flowers and Apologies. The young cubs pull their blistered paws across the sun-beaten land, the evil, scorching sun pounding its broiling rays on the cubs' poor, weather-beaten weather -beaten backs. Coda said dramatically, Oh, Coda, I tried. You don't have to be so dramatic. He just moaned. We've only been walking for about ten minutes, I figured. He sighed. I know, but it's so hot. I stopped and raised an eyebrow at him. He just winked. At least I think he was... He just whined. At least I think he was whining. It sounded more like a dying wail than a lion cub. We continued walking towards the thicket. Are you going to make it? I asked sarcastically over my shoulder. I'm not sure, he replied. It sounded like he didn't think he could make it. Oh, of course, the humidity is not helping. It never does, I said. We reached the thicket. Koda plopped on the ground under a nearby tree. I just rolled my eyes and started seeking out the best flowers. I reached down to one of the dainty pink blossoms. I brought it up to my nose and closed my eyes, inhaling its sweet fragrance. A smile spread across my face. I glanced over to Koda, who was now sitting up. He slowly stood up and strolled over to me. I knew you weren't that weak, I said with a smirk. He pretended to be hurt. Weak? You think I'm weak? I playfully shoved him. We shared a smile. Then I walked over and picked some flowers. So tell me again, why are we out here picking flowers? Koda asked. I turned to him and hurried him, handed him some flowers. I'm trying to apologize to Tenna. And flowers help a lot. He furrowed his brow. Aren't guys supposed to get girls flowers? I piled more into his, onto his stack. Then I stopped and furrowed my brow too. I thought for a moment. He had a good point. I slowly raised my eyes from the flowers to his face. I guess you're right. Oh, well, never mind. It's the thought that counts, he said. He walked back over to the trees and sat, and sat his load down his load of flowers, then trotted back beside me. He stood patiently, waiting for another bunch of flowers. I slowly pulled each flower off its stem. What am I actually going to say to Tina? I asked myself silently. I mean, hey, Tina, sorry I almost scratched your face off. Let's be BFFs again isn't exactly going to solve this problem. More like, Tina, I am really upset about what I did. Here's a peace offering. I know no matter how many flowers I bring that they don't make it all, make it all right. Tina, I really don't know if what I did can be forgiven. I want to ask you anyway. Just in case, I want to say, Kato, are you all right? Koda asked suddenly, startling me out of my thinking state. Yeah, I replied. I think these are enough flowers for now, he said, a concerned look on his face. I nodded. We went back to the pile of flowers under the tree. I evenly divided them into two separate groups. Koda picked up his pile, and I slowly picked up mine. We started off towards Pride Rock. I watched. I walked behind Koda, thinking, taking in the amazing sights. To my right was a hippo's pond. The hippos were lazily snoozing in the morning sun. On my left, I heard gazelles peacefully grazing on the lush, swaying grass. A young female gazelle swiftly and gracefully raised her head from the ground. Good morning, cubs, she greeted. Her voice was a little squeaky, and she glanced nervously at the surrounding grass. Hello, Nima, I replied. Nima was almost always worried. She was always afraid something would jump out of the grass and devour her. That's why she was so nervous. We moved on. The morning was so beautiful, and I hoped Tina would think so, too. 
Maybe he would be in a more forgiving mood if he was happy. Koda must have sensed I was worried. Don't worry. I'll be there to back you up, Koda said softly as he went to walk beside me. I looked at him with a small smile. He smiled back. We reached Pride Rock and suddenly I was afraid. I was afraid what Tina's reaction would be. I was afraid the flowers and the apology wouldn't change his mind. I was afraid Tina would not forgive me. Worst of all, I was afraid he would never forgive me and we would remain hateful the rest of our lives. That would be terrible. I stopped. The great shadow of Pride Rock darkened the land around me. I raised my eyes to look at the group of rocks before me. Even though some might call it a bunch of rocks, to me it was majestic. In this light, it looked gray. Sometimes it was more purple or tan. I studied the massive landmark in front of me. It gave me courage. Yes, that big bunch of, rock gave me, of rocks gave me courage to do the right thing to finish what I had started. I lifted my head with new t a new determination. I was ready to apologize. Coda and I climbed the path leading to the den. We looked around, but not one lion, lioness, or cub was in the den. So we moved to the rock platform. It was also deserted. Huh, I thought. Isn't it early for everyone to be out already? That's strange, Coda said. Where is everybody? I'm not sure, I replied. Stay here in case they come back. I'll go to the top. I jogged up the steep path that led to the very top of Pride Rock. Once I got there, I glanced around. Someone, I saw someone napping in the sun. I walked over to them. Tina, I said to the sleeping figure. Tina, I said to the sleeping figure. She opened her eyes and raised her head. She grunted. Yes, she said with a sigh. She lowered her head back down. I can't find anybody. Do you know where they went? I asked her. Nope, no one said anything to me for the past two hours, she said, already falling back to sleep. I sighed. Where is everybody? Don't you think it's a little strange? I asked. <laughs> she said. She raised her head again. Oh, <laughs> strange. Well, I'd better go find out what's going on, I said, turning away and heading down the path. See you later. Hey, ooh, she called, standing up. Wait for me. She ran over to where I was. What's with the flowers? She asked, gesturing to the flowers on my back. Oh, they're, they're, those are for Tina. As soon as I find him, I said. She looked a little confused, but then just shrugged and followed me down the pathway. I smiled. Did you find anything? Coda asked when I reached the bottom. Just Tina. Just Tina. I replied. The Tani came slowly and lazily down the path and finally reached us. Hey, Tani, Coda called. Hi. Hi, she said, glancing up to him from the ground. Do you want to go search for them? He asked me. Yeah, I guess so, I said. I said, let's put these flowers in the den. He nodded and followed me into the cave. We gently laid the flowers down in the corner and walked back out to Tani. Where should we search first? I asked. Well, Coda started, let's split up, and then in an hour we should all come back here and meet up again. Is that all right with you? I asked Tani. She shrugged. Yeah. Great, let's go, I said. Then we all headed in different directions. I went towards the zebra's grazing grounds. I searched everywhere around the grazing grounds, but all I found were zebras. After we had been searching for about half an hour, I heard someone. Kitto! Kitto! Someone called Kitto. I looked around. Koda was running towards me at top speed. He reached me. What is it? I asked him. He sat there, out of breath. I found everybody, including... He took a gasp. 
including what, Coda? I asked, including your father. <laughs>